Well, first, uh, Paulo, congratulations on being the uh, head coach of uh, Dynamo. Uh, appreciate your time for the strike in Texas. Just uh, what what are some of your first actions you want to get done on the job? Well, uh, thank you. First of all, I think it's uh, uh, it's assessing the squad that we have, uh, make sure that we are we have the the right pieces in place. But like I say in a, in a press conference, I think there's a step before that is that that is a, is instilling instill the values, uh, create a good culture in the club, in the locker room, uh, and make sure that they 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 hold to that standard and the expectations that we are do, that we have for them. You obviously impressed the club in the uh, hiring process. Uh, what are some of the things you you told them uh, during your interviews that that convince the club that you were the man for this job? Look, I yes, I think in press, I think in press probably, uh, I don't know if it's the right word. I think it was, I, I, I can say the how the interview went from my point of view, okay? The, the, the interview was very, very natural and very transparent. And when I spoke with Pat and Asher and the ownership group, I really express uh, what, how I work, okay? The values that I that I that I have as a as a coach, what I would like to do with the with the team, uh, what I would like to instill in the club, um, uh, the way that I believe uh, our team should be playing on the field. So uh, I think that was a match with 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 the ownership group and the club directors, uh, and that's why I say that it was it was natural and transparent because it, it was there's nothing that I did that it wasn't me. It was a just natural uh, what I believe in, how I see the game, and how I think we should approach uh, the Houston Dynamo going forward. It attracted you to Houston, and as a former Kansas City player who faced this club in the playoffs and those rivalries, uh, the Eastern Conference Championships, is it not weird going to a rival club? I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I've, it is a little bit. It is because I've been I've been with Sporting Kansas City for ten years, and to move to a rival club, yes. If I say that's not, it's you probably I'll be lying. But at the same at the same time, I think we all professionals and we, if you're not able to divide that and make sure that you're professional enough to, okay, this is, this is who I'm defending now. And I'm going to do everything possible for this team to be the winning team on a weekend on we step in the field. I probably should not be taking this job or any job. Right. So yes, it's a little weird, but once the ball start rolling, believe me, I'm I'm full orange from head to toe. And so I think we'd like to hear that. Um, as far as on the field, you're picking up the same roster essentially from, from last year. Um, we'll talk about some fitness issues. We'll talk about some motivation issues with some of the players. Um, obviously, all problems have come with, with the professional environment. Um, how do you think you, you're equipped to, to be able to handle that and tackle those kind of issues? <clears throat> I think... Look, it's like I say in a press conference, it's a fresh start for everyone. It's a new coach, new methodology, new playing style. We're going to steal the, the values, the methodology that we believe, the expectations, the standards. And the players that are not fitting that, they're probably going to be gone, right? Uh, the, the One player cannot be, be bigger than the team. And that's what we're going to try to build. We're going to try to build a team of team players that are going to be fighting for Houston every time we step on the field. And again, it's a fresh start for everyone, every fresh start for everyone. So, uh, so that's what we're gonna, how I'm going to address the first few weeks. With that being said, the general public is probably going to look at the roster and say, maybe not much has changed since last year, the same team that finished last. Um, are playoffs a realistic possibility? Look, uh, let me put it this way. We, we, we're going to add, we're going to add quality players. This is uh, the, the, the ownership, the ownership group, uh, the club leadership understand what the situation of the club is right now. And we need, we need to add a few pieces to, to be a competitive team. So if we can, if we can uh, add those right pieces, I can say uh, that, that being a plus is a reachable goal.
and that's that's gonna be our goal for for the 22 22 season do you have anyone in, in mind for does the club have anyone i know pat Pat also had to address some of this in the press conference, but just as far as what you'd like to see come in, you know, during this uh, first transfer window, or are you pretty much uh, in your mind ready to take the team as is and then maybe wait to the summer? Now we look, we're gonna add pieces. We're gonna we're gonna add pieces, and and look, it's just my first day, and we already started discussing uh, names of players that that could be a possibility, and they probably. Like Pat said, they were waiting for the coach to be announced to, to be part of those conversations. So there's been conversations going through, and I'm sure we're going to add a few pieces, hopefully before the season starts. Well, one of the things highlighted about your resume is your work with, with the SKC2 team. Um, have you looked, uh, obviously, like you said, first day, but have you kind of looked over the Dynamo Academy? What do you think of the system that's in place? Because uh, in the past, I think, you know, especially with the prior two coaches with, with the youth background, fans expected youth players to be up to, up to the first team. That wasn't the case. Um, so just your opinion on what, you know, the system that's in place and is it feasible to see younger players in the first team in your first year? Yeah, look, uh, from what I heard, the academy the academy uh, here in Houston has, has made gigantic strides. Uh, the city is huge. I'm, I, I'm guessing the player pool is, is huge. A lot of talent here in, uh, in Houston area. So um, we're going to be assessing and looking at those academy players as a source of talent as well. I mean, look, uh, we have to uh, discuss internally, of course, but make sure that we're giving those young players opportunities. But they will only get opportunities if they are if they have earned it to be there, if they're, if they're ready to contribute it to the first team. Right? We're not signing players from the academy just to sign and let them on the spot. We, we, we need to assess it, the young players. We need to see who are the ones that can really, really improve the quality and help the first team win on the weekends. I'll move into some of the easier questions now, Paul. Um, coaching, um, you know, you're coaching examples. Who do you model yourself after? Look, uh, I have a big influence of course, from, from Peter Vermees. I've been un working under him for, for the last five years. Um, uh, I was born and raised in Brazil, so I have a couple of coaches in Brazil that I, I like to watch and, and see them work. Uh, I played three years in England under Arsene Wenger, where I, I, I learned a lot, a lot in terms of organization defensively. Uh, but I also like to watch Bordiola. I think he's a great coach, and I think uh, the way that I see the game is very, very similar to the way that he plays. I'm not saying that my team is going to be a Guardiola kind of game, but I think some of the things that he does, I really, really uh, enjoy watching, and I think he's very effective uh, soccer-related in the way that I see the game. You mind sharing those three, you know, those few names from Brazil, those coaches? Yeah. Do you know Chite, the Brazilian national team coach? He is one. I like a guy that is coaching at Palmeiras now, Abel Ferreira, who was just champion of the Libertadores. Uh, and another one is Kuka, who is the Atletico Mineiro coach. All coaches that I always like to watch when the team is playing. Naturally, because you're Brazilian, I, I have to ask, um, do you want this team, the style, to be uh, Joga Bonito? I like I would like the style of Houston Dynamo to be effective and winning. If if we're playing Joga Bonito, great, right? But I think we are in a resulted oriented business. And however we decide to go with, I think it has to be with the winning mentality in mind. That's how I see it. Uh, from your experiences in Brazil, England, Canada, the USA, and Mexico. Um, is there much of a difference between cultures uh, you know, in the end, between between sport? Between the countries? You, you, you've, you've experienced the game in different countries. I mean, what, what are you seeing as a big difference or is it or is it pretty universal as far as when it comes to soccer? Yeah, no, there's differences. There's difference. Like in Brazil, you see the game is, is a little bit more pause. It's, there's more there's more time on the ball. Uh, it, even the referees, they allow the game to go less than normally in England. The England game is faster, it's physical, kind of similar to here in the United States. 
uh, in Mexico and also a little bit different as well. So it, it's, it, it varies. It varies from every, every country and it's normal. And the good thing is that I played in MLS for 12 years. So uh, I would like to say that I, I have the knowledge to what is required to play in this league and, and what are the requirements to be successful in this league. I want to walk quickly to your uh, reach of your experiences. First of all, Sao Paulo, what do you still remember about growing up playing the game? So well, uh, São Paulo, if you don't know, it's probably one of the bigger clubs in Brazil, knowing for uh, really, really uh, building and getting youth players sold everywhere and to the to the international market. So one of the biggest, um, what word can I say, the biggest um, creators, <laughs> creators, not creators, creators, not the word, it's probably... Uh, a team that is known by selling young players to Europe or to the big clubs and in, in, in the top leagues. So I had experience to to be part of that process from 11 years old to 18, where uh, the club gave me the base of what I what I know as a player. I'd say not much as a coach, but more as a basic from what I was as a player make the move over to, to England with Arsenal, what do you remember about, about the game in England, especially the, the also competitive nature of it? Yeah, I mean, it was a huge, it was a huge, huge change for me coming from Brazil to England. You talking about coming from a very, very slow, not slow, but slower game, less physical, less contact, and then you move to England where it's completely the opposite, very physical, very, very, uh, you know, a if you watch Premier League, referee is not calling a foul if it's really, really like a yellow card situation or something like that. So to adapt to that was hard for me in the beginning. That's why probably um, I probably struggled to get playing time in the beginning. But I mean, if I when I look back, I, I, I can only thank that I spent those three years in England because it, it gave me a, probably the base that I that I, I had as a player, right? I had that Brazilian influential of creativity and, and technique. When you go to England, it was more tactical, more physical. I think that gave me a great foundation foundation to who I was as a player back in MLS, I think. And that definitely was the formula for me that, in my opinion, made me successful in MLS. You went to Mexico uh, with Tigres. Uh, what, do you, what were your takeaways, of, even in a short time, with a club that has essentially become one of the big powers in the MX? Yeah, I mean, it, it, Tigres is such a big club. It, it, it's it's a massive club, great fan base. But the 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 season that was there, the team was fighting relegation. It was a, it was really really a nightmare. I mean, the club, the the coaches, the directors, the president, everyone was under a lot of pressure. Um, and we fortunately we 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 avoid the relegation, and we we stay in the first division. Probably was the worst season in history of Tigres, but it was a lot of pressure, and that experience uh, as well uh, brought me a lot of uh, good good aspects to who I am right now on how to handle pressure, on how to to deal with media, on how to deal with fans. So. Um, again, great experience, um, great fan base, great club, and I'm glad they're they're did well in the last few years. If I'm mistaken. You 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 were there right before Tuca Ferretti, right? You didn't get some good coach. By yeah, him. when when Tuca came, they yeah. they they released me. I was there with Daniel Guzman. Um, MLS, um, how has it changed from when you played to to what it is now? I think has the quality of players has increased. I think because of the the injection of money on the budget, uh, the teams are are have the ability now to bring better players, uh, bigger profiles, and that I think increased the the quality of play. Um, and but the physicality, the 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 physicality need the requirements to succeed at this level in MLS didn't change is the same. I mean, the mentality and the, and the competitiveness, if you don't have a team that has those elements, 
that team normally doesn't succeed on a long term on a 34 uh, game season. Um, so, yes, definitely increase of, of quality, but there's a lot of things that are still the same. Just a few more here to wrap up. Uh, your contract, I, I imagine, is for two years, like, like you know, it normally is a big contract. And uh, if that's the case, you know, what do you hope to get accomplished in those first two years? Look, I'm under contract. I'm under contract. Let's put it this way, <clears throat> right? And I'm here to do to do a job, and hopefully, I can do this job that I can stay here for for many years to come. So, I'm not worried about uh, time. I'm not worried about uh, how long is my contract. I just I'm worried about doing well and putting this team back where it belongs. That is in the top tier of MLS. Cool. Final ones, just. Paulo Nagamura, the, the person behind the coach. Um, what should supporters know about you? Uh, that I'm a very family guy. I'm on a, out of work. I like to spend time with my, my wife and my daughters. Uh, I think this, this, this job or any coaching job takes a lot of time of, of you. So when I'm, when I'm home, I try to, even though a, a brain of a head coach, it never stops. Believe me, when you're home, you're thinking about the other 25. I, I, I say this to my wife. Uh, I have I have other 25, 27 sons that are that are that are expecting me to to treat them well next morning in training. So um, even though this this job it's it's it takes a lot of you. I think I like to spend time with my family, with my daughters with my dogs and and be at home and and try to get my head away from the game because it's like I said it's it's demanding but it's something that I really enjoy doing it. That's one we all have a, a moment maybe we remember when we fell in love with the, with the game. Um, when was the moment you remember picking up a soccer ball or the moment that you remember uh, you know just falling in love with the sport? Well I can say uh, where are you from? I, I'm from Houston. Uh, are you from American. Houston? Mexican American, right? I don't. I, I believe I'm asking this question because I think in Mexico is just like in Brazil. When you when you when 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 you have a son in in Brazil, the first thing that you give it to them is a soccer ball, right? My 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 life wasn't different. So in Brazil, uh, I I grew up around a soccer ball, and my parents uh, they all okay. Do you want to be a soccer player? Let's go. So I, I can say that the moments that I, 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 it's vivid on my, on my memory from, from my parents is like, they would take me to parks and, and clubs to play soccer and kick the ball around. And that's, 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 that's way I, I was, I was, I was born and raised. So around the soccer ball, around a soccer club, I, I live very, I used to live very close to Sao Paulo football club. And that's, that's in my blood. So that's something that I love to do and I have passion about it.